some of the best experiences on the keyboard, on the guitar, or even without just worshiping and praising him. You got to understand he loves you to lavish the praises on him. And when you do that, he's going to bring power to your life. Amen. You with me? That's why pastor always tries to encourage you. Don't just sit there and look. Don't just sit there and listen to the TV. Like if you're listening to a TV or a radio, man, get into it. Get your spirit into it. Tell God, that's my heart, God. That's what I want, God. See, that song, when I heard it, I took possession of that song. And I got it in my spirit. Nobody taught me that. Nobody showed me that. It was in my heart. And I jumped on that keyboard and began to worship. And it's not bad for a blind man, is it? That's right. <laughs> uh, uh, see, God will bless you. If you desire to worship God and you desire that heart after God, you got to understand it's in worship. Guys, get a hold of this. Some of you, you know what I mean, you you used to sing specials and you used to, you know, you get into the music and this and that. It's not for your entertainment or your enjoyment. It's for the benefit, you know, the benefit of the church. It's so that you can encourage the church and you can bless them in other ways than preaching. You know what I mean? In the music, and whether it's rap or whatever it is, poetry or whatever, you got to get into it. You got to get it, let it get into you first. You with me? It's got to be inside of you. It's not something you can go take piano lessons and, and learn a few keys and then sing some nice songs to the to you know what I mean to for your entertainment or something. You know what I mean? You guys when you went to the funeral the other day you met Beto. Beto was the guy who who you know was was with me on the pulpit for CJ's funeral. That's CJ's uncle. Beto was he's amazing on the keyboard. But Beto, I said, man, you know what, I never did. He goes, come here, man. And he just showed me some things. And I man, you know what, but it took it in, in, in my desire. Because, see, I desired to be a worshiper. I was already a worshiper. I just desired to know how to play the keyboard. You with me? And it was just something he showed me. And from there it went on. I didn't think my daughters learned. Lisha, Lisha learned. My son on the drums. Everybody, we just learned. And I would teach them, do this, this. And, you know why? Because we're lifting up Jesus. We're not competing with Family Worship Center. 
We're not competing with praise is praise and worship or highest praise is praise and worship or New Hope Denver's choir. We're not doing that. We're here to lift Jesus up. Yeah. We're here to worship yeah. God. We're here to find things that bless the heart of God and yeah. do them. Yeah. David was a psalmist. David was a man after God's own heart. Right. And David wrote the psalms. And something you guys don't understand is that the psalms were songs. Yeah. Yeah. Psalms 23 wasn't for the funeral. Right. Psalms 23 was a song David would play on the harp. And David had an anointing on him so powerful that the king seen it and said, Hey, come and play for me, bro. I'm tormented by demons. David would come in with his keyboard or with his with his with the with the minstrel, and he would have him play and he would worship God. He would just worship God and then demons would leave Saul. You got to understand, man, in worship is so powerful because demons cannot, man, they cannot stay in the place of worship. They'll start manifesting. That's why you'll see people get uneasy. They don't know how to handle it because when the presence of God comes, when you're worshiping, demons get nervous and they'll run out. I've seen it happen time and time again. Or they'll fall down and manifest because you can't have the Lord and the, de and the devils in the same room. Somebody's going to have to leave and it ain't God. Worship is the one that takes you into the presence of God. You got to understand, you know how it is. When you go home and you'd invite that man for dinner, you'd make him dinner and put candles and then whoosh, hit the berry white. In the background, come on, it sets the mood. Do you think that it's, do you think that, don't you understand we were created in God's image and his likeness and what he likes, we like? Or what we like, he likes. That's why worship is heavy duty. Worship will bring the presence of God right into where he's at, right into where we're at. Because God's like, hit that, hit that, hit that Pastor Vince. Put him on there, because you know why? He'll draw me into his presence. He'll bring me, God loves that. David was a psalmist. Manuel, when you're in there and you're playing the, Manuel told me the other day he had a little keyboard. He said, man, Pastor, I'm having revival in my room. You're getting it, bro. You're getting the key. You're understanding. That me and Jesus, you know, we're going to go into the room and lock the door. And we're going to worship. And God's like, man, check this guy out. I'm going to come where he's at. Why? Because he's like, he's worshiping me. You got to understand, that's, that's heavy this morning. If you can get that. Even if it's, you don't know how to sing, you don't know how to play, but you can go and find you some worship music or some of the songs and talk to Naomi. Go down and talk to Sister Sally at the Scriptures. I say, man, I want worship, Sally. I want worship that's going to take me into the presence of God. She'll show you what CDs, she'll show you what songs to get. And you begin to put that in your home, put that in your car. When you get in your car, let the presence of God fill it. Because God will come and sit right next to you. God will come and just chill out in your house. He'll come and make his abode right there. The presence of God will come and demons will flee your home. Come on now. Get the heart of God. David was a psalmist. You with me? I've always, you know what I mean? I've had people in my, my church that were very talented, very good, and, and the piano, very good singers, but I've always desired, because see, I'm not a good singer, or I'm not very talented, I'm a worshiper. And I don't, might not know all this other stuff these big churches can do with guitars and, and choirs and bands and, and, and trumpets and all this stuff to make a production, but I do know how to bring God here. I do know how to get God's attention and bring Him to where I'm at, to where God will begin to intervene and move and begin to show me things and teach me things you couldn't get in the best seminars that these Christian authors are offering. You with me? See, you want to get a hold of God this morning. You don't want to get a hold of talent and all this stuff. If you got a desire, then get on that keyboard, man, and begin to play and say, God, teach me some things. You with me? Hey, Pastor, how does that song go? And Naomi, how does that song? Show me just the keys. Listen, three keys and you'll be able to worship God with most songs. All I played right there was four keys at the, four at the most because of the minor one that I used in there. And I was able to just worship God. I come in here and sit in here sometimes and just, I have church. I'm sure people out there are saying, are they having service or something? Because Pastor's getting down inside there. You with me? And I worship God. I learned to worship Him in different different ways. You know, I mean, I do some fast. But God, you know, in a lot of churches, they want the fast dancing songs. And that's good. I love that too. 
but they don't know about the worship. They don't know, you know what I mean? Come on, we can go. Come on, it's like a relationship, guys. You go out there dancing and this and that, moving in a grooving, but you're always thinking, get back to the house. Come on, I know you're religious and you're looking at me like a, you know what I mean? But you, your whole mind is like, you know, you're moving, doing what you say. Like, Man, I hope I impress them because I want to get back to the house. Get back to the slow songs. Get back to the intimacy. Come on now. You with me? It's in that place you're going to conceive. It's in that place you're going to get pregnant with the Word of God. You're going to get pregnant with the Holy Ghost. You're going to get pregnant with a vision from God because you spent time with Him. Listen, everything I'm telling you now is going to tie right into my message. Unless you spend time with Him, you'll never get pregnant. Unless you, get, unless you spend time with the Lord and you understand it's not about, oh, okay, pastor said do this and do that. My wife said the other day, it's not that, it's, it's not necessarily talk. See, prayer is not talk. Prayer is caught. Worship is not taught. Worship is caught. You can teach many people how to play a song or how to do this and that and how to play it. But then you get a worshiper like Bethel on that keyboard and he could take, I can only imagine what it would be like when I walk by your side. And he could hit that keyboard and the presence of God show up in that room because of the anointing on his life. You with me? And that's what I'm after. I'm not after just singing a song. I'm after the presence of God. Because in the presence of God, that's where you're going to be touched. That's where you're going to be healed. That's where God's going to speak to you. And that's where what pastor's preaching is not going to seem like a scolding. It's going to seem like, man, a, a, a blessing. You're going to be like, man, my pastor's blessed. My pastor's speaking into my life. What he's teaching me is going to go on forever. I'll never be the same. There was people when Paul taught. There was young kids, when teenagers, when Paul was teaching... Sleeping in the windows. You with me? And, and Paul would preach, and they, they would get so bored, they'd go to sleep, and one fell out the second story, boom, died. Paul said, leave him, we'll get him after service. You with me? Because what I'm saying is important, Paul said. And he was preaching the gospel to his people. You with me? And, the, and let the dead bury the dead. He said, we'll, we'll get him up in the morning when we walk out. Dirty devil, then maybe God will send him to hell for a few minutes. <laughs> That's where you get the 23 minutes in hell. That was him. One of those older sleeping when he should have been listening. You with me? Because when the presence of God comes, you're gonna be you're gonna be instructed, you're gonna be hearing things. You're going to be learning. And some of you, I don't know if it was Manny, I don't know, one of you guys said, well, you know what I mean, you're talking like when I'm preaching, you're like, God oh, gave me a message, Pastor. And what you were saying, God started to talk to me, tell me that. And, and I, I'm the same way. When I go hear Pastor Ray, I go hear any of the pastors, ministers, whoever it is, I'm sitting there and God begins and I begin to write. <laughs> I'm writing notes, but I'm also writing a message because God's speaking to me through that man. And you can sit there... You know, kind of shows where you're at spiritually. Right. You're sleeping or you're awake and God's, things are popping like popcorn inside of you. And you're getting words and you're getting, a, and God's speaking you and he's even convicting you. You know what? You got to go talk to that person and make it right. right. Come on. Amen. You with me? Amen. Amen. And, and, and so, you know what I mean? God's after the heart. We've been talking about the heart. Amen. We've been talking about the heart. I'm going to talk, I'm going to kind of continue on that avenue today. I can get my thing open here. And I want to entitle this message, Lord of All. Right. Last Yesterday morning, I think it was, God woke me up. And he gave me this message, and I'm like, Lord, thank you, Jesus. I love God to wake me up and begin to teach me or begin to tell me, you know, you need to pray. So I don't know when I woke up this morning just thanking Him and praising Him for something. I can't remember, but I was like, man, that's what, I want a relationship with God. Even when I'm sleeping, He's speaking. Amen. You with me? In my dreams, He's speaking to me. You with me? Amen. When I'm awake, when I'm, you know, I, 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 anything. God will speak to me through anything. I watch a cartoon and God will give me a message. Amen. You with me? Amen. That's just the way He is. He speaks to my life like that. Amen. You know why? Because I'm committed to Him. 
Brother Manuel, he, he texted me yesterday, and he, he texted me Acts 2, uh, 42 and 43 or something like that, where it said that, you know, after, you know, they, they, they got saved, 3,000 were saved, and, and they, 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 they were in the, the, the church, but they, that they had committed themselves to the apostles' doctrine. That's to your pastor's teaching is what it is. You with me? But you see, you got to be committed to this. And the devil will come and try and uncommit you to the, th to the teachings of your pastors. Right. He'll try and get you distracted and with life and with work and with business. And God wants you committed to the teachings. Yeah. Because we're coming to an end. And if you believe that we're in the last days and that there will be an antichrist and there will be a falling away and there will be all this stuff, then you better get the word of God inside of you so you can be ready to begin to save souls, pray for the sick, cast out devils. You know what I mean? Whatever it is, got to be ready. This ain't about just coming into church and hearing a good service that blesses you. God brought you here to train you up for these last days. And God was speaking to me again about the heart. And he says, son, I need to be Lord of all. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. It says, thou shalt love. He asked him, what is the greatest commandment, Lord? Uh, it was a lawyer, a Pharisee, who was trying to test him, trying to catch him. And he tells him, hey, Jesus, what's the greatest, what's the greatest commandment? And Jesus said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all. And I capitalized the word all thy heart, and with all, again capitalize, thy soul, and with all thy mind or thy strength. Amen? Father, I thank you this morning for the Word of God. I thank you that your Word is true and it works in our lives. Father, Lord God, I pray that you would release your anointing right now over the hearers and over me as a speaker, over as the very oracles of God. Let me speak, Father. Don't let me preach my own thing, Lord. Let me, t let me tell them what you told me, Father, in the right way that's going to that's gonna touch their hearts this morning, God. Father, I thank you for this Holy Spirit. I, I, I submit myself to you and I ask you for your help this morning. Touch the hearts and minds of your people in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. What's the greatest commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart. He emphasizes all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, everything that's inside of you. All is all. If I ask you what does all mean, it means all. You with me? You can't have it. And I put this, I put this, and this is something God showed me. He said, I put God wants all of you. 50% won't do. 75% of you won't do. 98% is still not enough. God wants all of you. You with me? Them 2% of the things maybe you struggle with, God's like, I want to deal with you in those areas because I want all your heart. My wife, in her, in, her, in her message on the offering, she talked about the little widow woman and the people that were in the church sitting there. And Jesus always does that. I'm telling you, you don't believe Jesus is checking you out even in your attitude, even in your motives? Right. Guys, you got to understand your motives are very important to God. It's not that you gave in the offering. It's why did you give? Right. It's not that you went and did an outreach and helped and did this. It's why did you do that? Right. You with me? you got to understand that God has humbled me and God has broken me to the place to where you see me and God is raising me up at this last day. He's given me opportunities. In the last two weeks, I've preached to probably five or six hundred people that are unsaved. And that's, 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 that's amazing. And it's like, God, just keep it going, Lord. Give me a platform. Give me a voice. Not because I'm trying to build my ministry or my church or so that I can be somebody in this city people look at. No, listen. You know what I mean? If that's the case, I don't want anybody to know who I am. Right. Everywhere I go, people know who I am. They, I might not know who they are, but they, that's, that, that's that one guy from the funeral. Right. I might not even know who they are. Therefore, i got to conduct myself very carefully in the, in the public, and so do you. Right. Especially if you hang with me. Especially if they know you come to this church. Because they'll, they'll judge you. They'll say, oh, you're going over there, Pastor Vincent. You're acting like that. You, you, what are you doing over here? Who are you with? Is that your wife? Is that your husband? That's not your, come on now. That's not your man. They'll, they'll watch you. They see you. They'll watch what's in your hand that you're drinking. 
We had some people call us one time that were pastors in the city. They were, they were pastors, and they called one of our guys, and they said, hey, you, you need to talk to your leaders, because one of your leaders is over here all drunk at the Applebee's, at the bar. They thought it was Andrea. And, I, and, and they called me, and I said, you, t you go over there. I know it's not her. I said, you go over there, and you tell that blessing by faith to go and confront them. If I was there, and I seen somebody else's leader or somebody else's uh, co-pastor or worker or whoever it was, drunk or messed up in a, in a bar, guess what I'm going to be doing? I'm not going to be calling, hey, guess what? You know, tattletale? <laughs> you with me? I'm going to talk to them because I love them. Yeah. I'm going to say, hey, what are you doing, bro? What's wrong with you, sister? What are you doing here? Yeah. Come on, let me get you home. Let's drive you home. You got, listen, you're, you're, don't you understand you're representing Christ, not your church, or, 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 or you're, you're representing Jesus. What's wrong with you? Yeah. You know what I mean? And I wouldn't have even called her pastors. That's right. I would have rebuked her and confronted her and told her, that you need to get straight because it's not my business to be a tattletale. Right. You with me? Amen? Amen. Uh -huh. <coughs> Amen? I don't even know why I'm talking about that. Got off there for a minute. Huh? <laughs> Tail bearer or armor bearer? Which one are you? Amen? Are you an armor bearer? Are you pastors and your leaders in your church? Or are you a tail bearer out there gossiping, man? Huh? God don't want 50%, 75%, or even 98%. God wants 100%. He said this, or, or I heard a saying this, of, of this, and you may have heard it before. Either he's Lord of all, or he's not Lord at all. The word Lord in the Greek comes from the word kurios, kurios. And what it means is supreme in authority. Supreme in authority. I don't think the heater is on, guys. Supreme in authority. It means controller, God, Lord, or Master. When you say, Jesus is my Lord, what you are saying is He is my supreme authority. There is no one higher than God in my life. He's my controller. You know, you guys that have the remote controls and the video games and the control. Where's my controller? Big, where's my controller? You're more concerned with that controller than you are the Lord. What it means is he's your controller. You with me? He's the one that, that makes you do what you do. He's your God. He's your Lord. He's your master. You with me? Either he's Lord of all, or he's not Lord at all. So when we talk to you about, and when we talk about finances and being faithful in your tithes and offerings, we're not doing it for us. Please understand that. We're not doing it for because many of you have not paid your tithes and offerings, and we've still gotten along, even without your, with your help. Even in your disobedience, we've still gotten along. And we still loved you. You ought to thank God for that. Some of us should, me and my wife should be offended at some of you to where we've asked you to leave the church. You with me? But we still loved you even through your disobedience and giving. Even through your rebellion in that area. We've, we still loved you. Because money don't move us. You understand when you're in that area and you're disobedient, all hell's against you. Money opens the door to your family, your children, your marriage, your body. Come on now. Unforgiveness opens the door to, to sickness in your body. Some of you, you keep struggling with sickness and all this stuff, and it has a root in unforgiveness. It's not whether the doctor's got your medication right or wrong, or this or that. There's a bitterness and there's an ugliness in your heart. You with me? That only God can deliver you from. And until you deal with that issue, that problem, that situation, the devil will kill you if you don't get it right. He's not playing games. And the moment you do, your body will be healed just like that. 
You with me? And I understand this is not for everybody. This is not everybody's case. But some of you got to understand, man, your ex hurt you. This person molested this person and all this stuff. And you got all this ugly gunk and junk on the down on the unforgiveness and bitterness. And unless you deal with it, I'm telling you today, well, you'll learn in this service right here. Either he's Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. You with me? Is he your controller? Is he your master? Amen? I hope he is. The disciples in Matthew 19, 27. And brother, if you want to get there real quick. And I think it's even a little bit before that where Jesus was talking to his disciples and, and, and he was telling them, it's harder for a rich man. I think it is, brother. If you look up 1927, is it 25? 23, brother Corey, if you want to start from there and just kind of read down to 27. And Jesus said to his disciples, Assuredly, I say to you, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then Peter answered and said to him, See, we left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? So Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Okay, and let's stop right there. Thank you, brother. He said, Peter, Peter said this to Jesus. He said, Lord, he was saying it's impossible for a rich man to get into heaven because everybody thinks that there's power in money. Some of you in this place, you're thinking, you're so upset, you're so mad, you're bitter in your heart because you don't have money. And you got to understand that that right there shows your relationship with God. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to pick on you. I'm telling you today that, 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 that there's, a, this, there's a distinct... You know what I mean? Issue between God and money. There's a link there that you cannot love one or the other. You can't, you can't love both of them. Right. If you love God and if He's Lord of all, I don't care if you're broke, haven't eaten in three days, and you're out in the cold and you're wandering the streets, He's Lord of all. And God will supply every need you have. But if you have an all you can think of and you're mad and you're upset and you're bitter because you don't have this, you don't have that, and you don't have money, and you know, you know, food scarce, and, and, and you have to eat bologna, and you're throwing a fit and all this, it really shows your relationship with God. He's not Lord of all. If he was Lord of all, you'd break that little piece of bread with your family and you'd say, thank you, God. Thank you, we got a piece of bread to eat. Because it all comes down to your heart. It all comes down to the condition of your heart and the attitude. Because the attitude, all it is, is an expression of your inward, your outward expression of your inward feelings. You with me? And when that attitude's there, it means you have a bad heart. When you have a bad heart, it means you're not right with God. You with me? And when you're not right with God, you're in a place where Satan can take you out. You with me? You got to understand that. His disciples came and they said to him, he, uh, you know, he, he, Jesus said, it's easier for a rich man to go into, uh, 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 what did he say? Camel for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to go into the kingdom of heaven. And he's like, God, I don't understand because they're thinking riches is everything. Right. And Jesus said, with man it's impossible, with God all things are possible. And he said, well, what about us, Lord? What about us? We're out here, you know what I mean? We haven't eaten, we've been walking, we're tired, we're going to Nazareth, we're going to Galilee, we're going across the sea, we're going over here, we, we haven't even eaten, and we're tired! <laughs> he said, we've left everything to come and follow you. See, some of you haven't left everything yet. You don't even know what it means to leave everything. You still got all kinds of stuff. You with me? And he said, man, you know what, God, we've left everything. And I'm telling you everything. Listen, when you see God blessing other people, and when you see God blessing your pastors, don't hate on us. That's right. 
You don't know where we've been. You don't know what it's taken us to get to where we're at. So don't look at her shoes. Don't look at her bag. Don't look at my suit. And, and, or, you know what I mean? Or what I drive and say, well, gee, you know, wow. Gee, it must be nice. Gee, that's a bitter heart. That's right. Amen. You with me? You ought to thank God with those who rejoice and weep with those who mourn. You ought to be considerate and compassionate and honoring and saying, you know what, man? If anybody deserves it, it's them. That's right. If anybody's been through hell and back and, re and these are, you know what I mean? Peter said, we've left everything to follow you. What is for us? You with me? And, and Jesus tells him, he says, you know what? He said, he that's left father, mother, sister, brother, all this stuff, and even lands and all this, he said, he shall receive a hundredfold in this life and the one to come. See, the thing is, you don't understand. And I heard somebody say it the other day, in the kingdom of God, not the near United States, not the democracy of the United States, but the theocracy of the kingdom of God, in here, the way up is down. <laughs> You with me? It's not doggy dog, get yourself up, step on whoever you can to get up. It's down. Yeah. Humble thyself in the mighty hand of God. Amen. You with me? I remember, remember you guys were watching, we showed a video of that Pastor Steve, uh, and he was talking about the tugboat, remember? Yeah. Yes. He was saying something to the effect, and I just read my notes the other day. He said, pride is, is, is something about you trying to to gain something in your own ability. Humility is trying to gain something with God's ability or something like that. And I was like, man, you know what, God, I want to be humble, Lord. I want what you have. Everything we have is from the Lord. Amen. You with me? These seats, these pews, these, the carpet, everything we have is given from God. This right here was because we raised money. The carpet is because we raised money. Anything you see is because either people gave it, we got blessed, or something. This is not something we came in with thousands and thousands of dollars right. and purchased because we had the finances. This is all God given. Right. So when a person comes in and judges us and prays assembly, yeah. that's totally different things. Right. You with me? Yeah. We don't have rich people in our church. Right. We have those who come from the streets, down and out, welfare, you know what I mean, not even working. Many of the people that were addicts, they didn't work. You with me? So we can't compare ourselves to the church that has lawyers and doctors and dentists and, and, and you know, businessmen and, and wealthy individuals. We can't do that. But everything we have, an organization. You with me? Amen? Amen. Not my, my pastor don't live like that. Right. And my pastor doesn't, I, I don't, you know, he, he gets all his finances. He raises whatever he does. That's all Pastor Ray and his congregation. That's not any organization helping him. And uh, the same way, he didn't help us financially do any of this stuff. Right. It's like if it's your church, then God gave it to you. Yeah. You with me? Amen. See your job and your house and your life and your children and your their their eating and their their your gas and all that stuff. See, that's yours. That's not my responsibility, that's right. church. That's right. Amen. You gotta understand that. Yeah. Because you don't have doesn't mean it's my fault. That's right. Amen. Come on now. Well, they, well, they keep taking offerings and they keep doing this, you know, and all that. It's not my fault. Talk right. to God about it. Right. You with me? Right. And if I was you, I'd begin to fast and pray. And I would get on my face for hours and hours and say, God, give me a plan for my family. I'm tired of seeing my family hungry. I'm tired of going with no gas. Man, maybe you don't even have a car. And this and that. Start believing God. Yeah. Don't sit around mumbling and murmuring and complaining. Start believing God. Get a vision in your life. God, this is what I want. And go looking for work. Go looking for jobs. And be faithful at the one you're at. Yeah. You with me? Man. Come on now. Yeah. Be faithful if it's a, if, it, if it's throwing papers in the morning, if it, you know washing dishes, if it, whatever it is. Be faithful because God looks at your faithfulness. Yeah. Amen. If you're washing pans, throwing them all mad, angry, this and that. I don't know why. You know, how come the Corey's over there working on the computer? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Don't be hating. Don't right. be jealous. Right. Amen. Are you with me? Pray. Amen. You don't know what that man's been through for three years. That's right. Obedient, faithful, servant. Amen. Three years. 
And you, you know what I mean? Finally, they let him go. He's supposed to be their one. <laughs> and so when you see God begin to just pour his blessings on Corey's life, don't hate, just say, thank you, Lord. I want to be like Corey when I grow up. <laughs> you with me? I was talking to, to my wife yesterday, and I said, I don't know. I said, but, you know, I was telling her, you know, I love to bless my wife. I love to give, you know what I mean? She had me or anything. I said, man, get it. Yeah. Get it, because I love her. I want to bless her. And I, God showed me. He said, son, he said, that's the way I am with you yeah. and my church. Yeah. He said, I want to bless them. I mean, he said, man, you ask of me, I'll give you the kingdom yeah. that pleases God. God's a lavishing God. God's like, you know what? You have not because you ask not. And then when you do ask, you're asking for, you know, God a thick old gold chain, man. $10,000 chain. For what? You ain't even got a car. <laughs> Mr. T's God's like, get your priorities in order. Ask me. I'll give you whatever you need. It's like these men, right? They go out on this mountain. That guy hires them, takes them out on a mountaintop or on, on a hill country. He gets a bunch of poles, a bunch of string, wire, you know, because they and the, and the mountains or in the country, they plant poles and they string wire to, to put off their property, to mark off their property. And so he hires these two knuckleheads and he tells them, you know, come on, I'm going to hire you and put you up here to, to plant holes, to dig holes, plant poles, and string wire. And, 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 and he took them out, he gave them everything they needed, their tools, their gloves, their, their you know, the thing to tie off the wire, the, the, the whole post hole dig, everything. He said, I've given you everything you need, and if you need anything else, just call me. Okay, so they started going, man, about an hour into it. Man, dude, you know what sounds good? One of the big old Sonic slushes, bro. Maybe put some ice cream in there. Something like that. that sounds good to me, bro. Call the boss. You think so? He said, if you need anything. <laughs> See, some of us don't understand. We're still foolish in our mind, thinking anything, things that are productive, things that you can use to promote the kingdom of God. God said, I'll give you anything you need. If it's a car you need, because you want to go picking people up, I'll bless you with a bus. Amen. Not with a two-seat Porsche. Right. <laughs> or a Corvette. <laughs> and God may do that too. You with me? Because God don't mind you taking a cruise. Amen. But they called the boss and said, hey boss. He said, yeah, what's up? He said, you said, call if we need it. Said, yeah, said, what do you need? He said, man, we need a couple of those big 44 ounce stuff. To put some nerds in there too. That boss said, you knuckleheads. I didn't say if you want anything. I said, if you need anything to fulfill the purpose, I sent you to work. Call me. Yeah. Click. <laughs> According to his will. Amen. Check this out. He told them, we've left everything. And he said, not only in this life will you receive a hundredfold, but in heaven. He said, what? You'll sit on them 12 thrones up there. But look at this. I, I put the disciples left everything or all to follow Jesus. And I said, well, maybe it wasn't all the disciples but I know for sure it was Peter, James, and John. Right. They left their father. They left their fishing boats. They left all to follow Christ. I can't say nothing about the other ones. But you know what's funny? I put here, I put Peter, or Peter, James, and John. They did. Why do you think that those are the ones Jesus used, trusted, and cared for the most? Why do you think Jesus would always call James, John, and... And Peter and say, use three, come with me. Use three, use, use nine, go ahead and chill. <laughs> go throw rocks in the lake or do something. Come on, guys, I want to teach you guys something. Yeah. See, if you're, if you're willing to leave everything, God knows. He knows the, the heart. He knows the little widow that she took the offering and this was all she had, church. Yeah. Everybody was given a 20. Everybody's given five or, of course, a lot of ones. <laughs> Maybe somebody gave a hundred, but the little, wid the little widow woman came with two little pennies, but it was all she had, and she knew it, and God knew it. 
But he looked at the condition and the attitude and the motives in her heart. And she said, Lord, todo lo que yo tengo es tuyo. Everything that I have is yours, Lord. And she put it in that offering and walked away. And Jesus was scoping them out, just like he's scoping this church out this morning. You with me? Some of you, he walked, he said, man, they didn't even walk down to the offering. Huh? And it's not because they're broken, going through hard times. Just got paid. What's up with that? He watches us. Man, it's quiet. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I better move on. I feel nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus told the rich young ruler in Matthew, right there where you're at, Corey, Matthew 19, 21. Read it what it says there. And Jesus said to him, If you want to be perfect, go. Sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come. Follow me. Uh, Jesus told the rich young ruler, he said, go sell all that you have and give it to the poor. And what did he say? Come and follow. He said, you and treasure. you will be perfect. Yeah. If you want to be perfect, I think is what he said, right? <laughs> if you want to be perfect. Yeah. And see, the thing is, is that some, some people, and I hope it's not you in this place, satisfied with, well, I'm not perfect. That should be your goal. That should be your aspiration in life. Is to be perfect in God's sight. You with me? It's like, God, you know what? What do I need to do? Well, I've been going to church, and I've been going to prayer, and I've been doing this, and I guess you don't see that. No, God sees everything you do. Don't be looking at what I see. You with me? God sees everything you do, but he also sees your motives in doing that. You with me? He told him, go sell everything you have. Give it to the poor. You know why he was saying that? I was like, why, why, why not bring it back and give it to you, Jesus? He said, because when you do that, he said, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was a stranger, you took me in your home. Took who? Took me in your home. He said, when did we see you? He said, when you did it to the least of these. Jesus takes your service and your motives and your heart and your love for him very, very seriously. You with me? Amen. And when they said, well, we didn't see you, Jesus. Had it been you and not the pastors, I would have gave. And Jesus said, when you've done it to the least of these, my brethren, and you've done it unto me, depart from me. You with me? Or, well done, good and faithful servant. See, it all comes down to our hearts. It all comes down to our, our desires, amen? Sell everything, give it to the poor. And he said, what did he do? So he went and he sold everything. He had a, a auction. He, 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 no? no. <laughs> he walked away. Yeah. Jesus himself left all his glory in heaven to come and to save us. Second wow. Corinthians 8, 9, it says that he became poor. Would you read that, Brother Corey? 2 Corinthians 8, 9, He became poor that we might become rich. He says, 2 Corinthians 8, 9, For you know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though He was rich, yet for your sake He became poor, that you through His poverty might become rich. Mm. Jesus became poor for you. That you, through his poverty, might become rich spiritually. You with me? I'm not, I'm not worried about it. I had a friend one time. He said, Pastor, I'm praying for you. And me, he said. They always throw in me, too. <laughs> like the thief on the cross. Said, hey, God, Jesus, save yourself. And me. He said, Pastor, I'm praying for you. And me. To be millionaires. So that we can get a million dollars. And we can do all this stuff. I said, oh, come on now, man. You with me? The guy ain't even, I don't even know he's serving the Lord today. Oh, Lord. I've seen people get millions and walk immediately walk away from God. So money will probably drive you from God, not to him. Oh, I'd buy us a new chair. You wouldn't buy us anything. You wouldn't even give me a hamburger. you take off. You'd be in Tahiti. Come on now. Jesus became poor that you might become rich. Jesus said in, in, in Matthew 10, 37, 
He said, if you love your father or mother, sister or brother, your wife or your children, houses or lands, or even yourself, more than me, all capitalized, more than me, he says, you, you're not worthy of me. Is that heavy? Did he say, don't love your father and mother? Don't love your sister or brother? No. Don't love your wife or children? Don't love the things God has given you, like a home or your lands? or Don't love yourself. He said, love, love your neighbor as you do yourself. Yeah. Love your wife. Wives, submit to your husband. Honor your husband. Respect them. Children, he said, obey your parents. Parents, don't be rude and don't be harsh to your kids. He said, you're embittering your children. You with me? He said, you know what I mean? God gives us things and stuff like that. We're not supposed to love those things. You with me? He said, you can love your father. God said, honor your father and mother. The first and greatest commandment with a promise. Listen, that's heavy duty in God's eyes. You with me? So is he knocking all that stuff? Is he, is he what would you say, like uh, c contradicting himself? He's saying, if you love any of this more than you love me. You with me? Abraham, all he desired in his life. Oh, he had riches, bro. He had lands. He had so many cattle and donkeys and, ca and camels and, and, and sheep. Abraham was, the wel was wealthy, man. But he didn't have a son. He had servants, bro, that were better than his sons. But he didn't have a son. He was missing something inside. And God, God, and God seen the need. God said, you're going to have a son. You know, your wife over there laughing at me. She's going to become pregnant. I didn't like, yes, you did. Because God hears everything. You with me? You can't mock, you can't laugh, you can't do anything in your tent or in your house that God did not hear you. So be careful. And God says, you know what? He says, you, you, you shouldn't laugh at me, man. By this time next year, you're going to conceive a child. And Abraham took that son, Isaac, and loved him. Laughter, his name is. And he loved him, and he trained him up. And I believe he was there teaching him daily. He'd wake up to be with Isaac. And he'd watch him, and he would train him, and he would teach him. And if you ever watch a movie, you'll see what I'm talking about. That's a joke. But he loved this kid so much, and I believe God's like, Hey, hey but can I, but you used to come and... You would go to prayer. And you came to church faithfully. You haven't been here? But you know what? That's it. I want you to take that son, and I want you to take him to the mountain and sacrifice that thing I gave you. You know why? I believe that God and his word confirms that he's a jealous God. He didn't say don't love your children. Anything He wants you to love them more than anything but him. You with me? He said, you know what, take that child, your only begotten the son, and, and, and kill him on that mountain. Wow. You with me? And when he was ready to kill him, when he had taken him in the morning, and when he laid him on that thing and lit a fire underneath, and was ready to slice his neck, man, he was going to shove that knife in as he was going to do it. And God seen he was going to do it, and God seen he was going to fulfill it. Wow. And he would have done that because he said, God, I'm sorry I put something before you. Yeah. He, he got angry, he was going to kill that kid. Nothing's going to be between us. And God says, stop. He said, now I know you love me more than him. You with me? And he said, as a matter of fact, look. And over there in the thicket was a ram caught by his horns. And God said, take that and sacrifice him. And Jesus is the Lamb of God. You with me? See, me and you deserve to be killed on that altar. We deserve to be in hell. And God sent his son... Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, to die in our place. He said, stop, don't kill him, don't let Vince Diaz die on that. Stop that, you know what I mean? And he, and he brought me back to life. He said, no, we're not going to do it because I got some people you need to talk to. Because he's seen, I wanted to change. I wanted a way out, I just didn't know it. That's why I freak out on these kids. And, and a lot of us, we look at them and say, I can't believe it. They were smoking weed over there in the funeral. And you could smell it. And so disrespectful. So, but they're sinners. What do you expect? Right. Holiness? We can't even get that from the church. Right. Right. Huh? 
They're yeah. sinners. They don't know any better. They're wearing their 13. They're wearing their gang stuff. They're, 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 you know what I mean? That's the way they think. Yeah. Something greater has got to intervene inside of them and say, stop it. It's not going to be maybe even a testimony or a track or anything. It's going to only be the hand of God. That's why we must pray. Amen. It's supernatural. It's not in our ability or in my ability to even speak to them. Right. Unless God.